So this is the new Razorblade 15. Now I recently got this earlier this month in store and I've been playing around with it for a while now. And let me tell you, this is a beast of a laptop. It comes with promising specs to play all your favorite games at ultra and at high frames per second and makes video editing and productivity a breeze with its fast processor. But is it worth its price? Should you, the average consumer, buy one? Is it worth upgrading from the previous Razorblade 15? In today's video, I will be taking a look back at the new Razorblade 15, seeing if gaming on a laptop is truly better than playing on a PC. Let's find out. busy all last year, especially with COVID, bring out a new laptop designs and revisions such as a new Razorblade book, which aimed to compete in the notebook market against the Dell XPS 13 and Zenbook from Asus. Other revisions included their Razorblade Stealth and new Razorblade 15, which was aimed at gamers alike with its high performance design, featuring a 1660 Ti all the way up to a 2080. The model I have here is the 2020 base version, with the 2070 and i7 1070U. This laptop was aimed at gamers, seeking a sleek and minimal design with all performance to rival a desktop, which it did, completely destroying my desktop in all my tests and benchmarks. The laptop design is very minimal and built extremely well, rivaling or coming a bit close to the MacBooks, a full metal body and a plastic bezel for the screen. There is a little flex to the keyboard deck and to the bottom of the laptop. Note that the metal that Razer uses is very high quality, but attracts so many fingerprints when using it. It's one of the main reasons why they included a microfiber cloth in the box. I really hope that Razer trials with other metals that don't have the same attraction of fingerprints. On the back, you have the Razer logo, which lights up in green. I would prefer to see the faded Razer logo that you see on the blade stealth. The bottom of the blade comes with rubber feet, which helps it to not slide around, but also raises the laptop to allow airflow. You have the two fan grills and intakes on each side. You have the trackpad on the bottom with a glass and metal finish, which aims to help your fingers glide across and perform gestures easily, which you can do by the way, since this trackpad has Windows precision drivers, allowing you to scroll and use Windows with ease. It's close to the MacBook, but not quite there just yet. It's big and allows a lot of space for my fingers to move. The keyboard is pretty much unchanged from last year's model, except for the enter key, which has been shortened. The shift key has also been extended, but now you're given these smaller arrow keys which I saw in the MacBook Airs a couple years ago. It's definitely not terrible, but it's annoying to use and press when the keys are incredibly small. I definitely prefer last year's. Note that this keyboard comes with Razer's signature RGB lights, which is very configurable and bright. Obviously the best in the business when it comes to making keyboard lighting. It comes with standard speaker grills on each side. The speakers sound alright, they get loud in the mids and are clear, but don't offer a lot of bass. The laptop comes with a standard I.O. as it comes with a charging port, the USB ports, one on the left and two on the right. This also comes with USB-C and Thunderbolt 3, allowing you to use an external GPU and use devices with fast speeds. Now, the base model comes with an Ethernet port, whilst the Advanced does not. I'm not a fan of the Ethernet port, as I believe that this may have been one of the reasons why this laptop is slightly taller than the Advanced model. The screen of the unit is very color accurate almost 100% across all my color tests, including Adobe RGB and so on. It does come with HDR, so photo editing on this is possible and preferred for me as it gives me an accurate representation of everything on the screen. This does come with 144Hz ability, so games look incredibly smooth when playing them, and the RTX 2070 is fast enough to allow you to hit those frame rates, especially in esports titles like Rainbow Six Siege and CSGO. The screen can only play those games at 1080p, which is one of the reasons why you can get such good performance at those games. You can get the 4K OLED model, which has an even better screen, but personally, I don't see the appeal of a 4K screen at 15 inches. You won't really see any quality differences with a screen that small. At the top of the screen, you have the webcam. It's all right, nothing special, but pretty much the same as last year. I really don't understand why laptop manufacturers don't include better webcams, as we have the technology to shrink our cameras small enough without a loss in quality. Like, look at Apple with their iPhones. Opening the razor blade will give you access to both two RAM slots, the storage and the Wi-Fi card, along with the battery. Razer is still allowing users to upgrade their components whenever, which is a nice touch. The laptop comes with an i7 10750H6 core processor, an RTX 2070 Max-Q with 8GB of VRAM, 16GB of RAM at 2900MHz, a 512NVMe SSD with 4 lanes of PCIe, and also a 65 watt hour battery. The SSD is incredibly fast, as it is NVMe, and allows for 2900MB read and write speeds, allowing for fast boot times in games and in Windows, which it takes about 5 seconds to get into Windows from startup. The battery is pretty good on the laptop, allowing for 5.5 hours of usage with a screen at 250 nits. There is a large opening next to the battery, allowing for more storage to be added such as another SSD or hard drive. But to be honest, 
I do think they could have allowed the battery to be extended to fill that slot and provide better battery life, maybe up to six or seven hours. If you do want a bigger battery, you would have to go to the advanced model as it has a bigger battery, which extends out, but since it has such power hungry specs, the battery in some cases is worse than the base model. Performance on the Razer Blade 15 is very good, with it crushing my benchmarks in all AAA games at Ultra. The new RTX 2070 Max-Q destroys the previous Gen 1070 by a lot, achieving above 60 FPS in all games at Ultra. My Fire Strike test gave the Razer Blade above 17,000 points, which is way up there with high-end gaming PCs, and can also allow you to play some games at 4K. Deus Ex Mankind at Ultra on 1080p gave me around 113 FPS. GTA 5 at Ultra gave me 125 FPS and so on. You can see that the Razer Blade 15 crushes games with its high performance, but for its price, I would have liked to seen a better CPU, specifically from AMD, as they have been destroying Intel with their new high-end CPUs that compete with the i7 10th gen and 11th gen CPUs. Video editing is a breeze on the Razer Blade 15, as I rendered a 5 minute 4K clip which took around 1 minute and 40 seconds to render. This is the perfect editing machine for anyone to pick up. It can be used for photo editing as well with its high end screen. Now, all this performance and power has to come at a cost, especially when this is the thinnest gaming laptop right now. I'm talking about its thermals. Now, this isn't the bonfire that every big YouTuber is saying and whatever the hell Matthew Moniz is saying. This laptop can run hot, like very hot. In my tests playing games, the laptop would hit around 80 to 87 degrees Celsius, sometimes breaking 90. This is because the chassis of the blade is super thin, and it doesn't provide for adequate cooling options. So just remember, these laptops will run hot under intensive tasks, like rendering or gaming. And no, Razer will not unlock better performance out of this laptop. It would probably explode if we fed it more power because of the cooling, but it's also cool enough not to give you third degree burns. In conclusion, the Razer Blade 15 is a really good laptop. It owns up to its name, offering high performing components and, impress and impressive results in games and editing. It's sleek and has a brilliant design that is up there with MacBooks. Obviously, this laptop runs hot, we know, but it doesn't become unbearable to the point of giving you third degree burns, like the MacBook 16. It's impressive what Razer could do with such little space and how they could do it. The laptop can be cheap. For the 1660 Ti model, it starts at around 1600, but for the 2080, you're looking at $2200 which is a big step up in performance, but also in cost. If you're willing to pay a premium for the best build quality from a Windows laptop on the market, then I would highly recommend this laptop to anyone. This has been Nathan Hines, and I hope to see you all in the next video. Jason.